Giant centipedes are among the arthropod world's most formidable predators. Big, fast and venomous, with a voracious appetite to boot, these fearsome hunters are truly awe-inspiring to witness. There are many centipede species found all over the world that can attain impressively large sizes, and in this video we'll be taking a look at some of the centipede world's ultimate heavyweights. Coming in at number 5 is Scolopendra dehanae. This is a species most commonly known as the Vietnamese centipede. However, its range extends well beyond Vietnam, being found throughout Southeast Asia, both on the mainland and numerous islands. Asian centipedes have a comparable reputation to Australian spiders. They're notorious for being huge, cranky, highly venomous, and found all over the place to boot. Except unlike Australian spiders, they actually somewhat live up to that notion. Tropical Asia is something of a hotspot for giant centipedes, with a wide array of species, both described and undescribed, dwelling in the lush rainforests that blanket much of the landscape. Of all the centipedes that call Asia home, Scolopendra de Hanai is almost certainly the largest. This species typically grows to around 20 centimetres in length. Although some individuals can attain far greater sizes, occasionally surpassing 30 centimetres. This specimen here is among the largest on record, possibly the largest, and measures 32 centimetres in length. If its size isn't enough, this species is also armed with one of the most potent venoms of any centipede. Across its broad range, Scolopendra de Hanai exhibits significant variation in coloration and patterning depending on locality, with a yellow-legged form from Vietnam being perhaps the most well-known. Such variance is, however, quite the norm for Scolopendra centipedes, especially widespread species, which is why coloration alone is seldom a reliable characteristic for identifying centipedes. Scolopendra de Hanai is rather often labelled as Scolopendra subspinipes, of which it was once considered to be a subspecies. However, it, along with several other former Scolopendra subspinipes subspecies, have since been found to be distinctive enough to be regarded as their own separate species. Scolopendra de Hanai differs from Scolopendra subspinipes in a number of ways. It lacks spines on the underside of its terminal legs, and is generally larger and more heavily built. In spite of the taxonomic revision having been published several years ago at this point, mislabeling of Scolopendra de Hanai remains common. I guess that, like with feathered dinosaurs, people just can't get with the times. The type specimen of Scolopendra de Hanai, the individual upon which the species name and description is based, was found in Java, Java is therefore regarded as the type locality for this species, the location from which the type specimen originated. This species' success, being both widespread and common, is likely due in part to its highly adaptable and generalised lifestyle. Not only is Scolopendra de Hanai sufficiently large and venomous enough to take a wide variety of prey items, anything from other invertebrates such as insects and spiders to small vertebrates like frogs and lizards, it is an incredibly versatile hunter, proficient at both ambush predation and active foraging. And while predominantly a terrestrial animal, the species may also hunt arboreally. Next in line, at number 4, is Scolopendra alternans. This species occurs throughout the Caribbean in localities such as Cuba, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. It is also present in Florida, although largely restricted to the state's south. Like Scolopendra de Hanai, Scolopendra alternans exhibits variation in coloration and patterning across its distribution, albeit not to nearly the same extent as the former. Centipedes from some localities, such as Haiti, are boldly marked with dark horizontal bands, while others, such as those from Florida, are as plain as a TikToker's personality. In addition to this, the size that these centipedes can attain also varies greatly in accordance to locality. Individuals originating from Florida seldom reach 20 centimetres in length, 
while Puerto Rican scolopendra alternans may grow in excess of 25 centimetres. But the real heavyweight for this species is a variant that has been aptly nicknamed the Hispaniola Red Giant. These blood red behemoths appear to be found towards the south of Hispaniola, and can grow to over 30 centimetres long. In addition to its impressive length, it is also what I believe is called a hecking chonker. Uh, what I mean to say is it's very thick and bulky. This is in contrast to many Asian scolopendra species, which tend to be fairly slender and gracile. The sheer bulk of Scolopendra alternans affords it greater physical strength at the cost of slightly lower speed, perfect for wrestling down large and potentially dangerous prey items such as this tarantula. Reports of the venom potency of this centipede are somewhat inconsistent. Some describe envenomations as only causing mild to moderate pain, while others place the species on par with the highly venomous Asian centipedes. This may seem rather confusing, but there are a few plausible explanations for this variability. The first is that centipedes don't always inject the same quantity of venom. Depending on the animal's state of aggravation at the time, the centipede can deliver anything from a gentle pinch to a full-blown envenomation. An additional explanation is the presence of the introduced and highly venomous Scolopendra subspinipes throughout a significant portion of Scolopendra alternans range. In fact, if the observations on iNaturalist are any indication, Scolopendra subspinipes seems to be more commonly encountered than Scolopendra alternans in certain localities. Hardly surprising when one takes into account the former's much more rapid growth rate. Given the passing resemblance between the two species, it's plausible that some bites from Scolopendra subspinipes may have been attributed to Scolopendra alternans. While a casual viewer may be quite likely to confuse the two species, upon closer inspection they should be rather easy to differentiate, with Scolopendra alternans being substantially bulkier than its introduced counterpart. Now we come to the top three all of which hail from South America, a continent whose sole existence I'm beginning to suspect is for the purpose of making Australia seem pathetic in almost every aspect. So without further ado, in third place is Scolopendra galapagoensis. As one would be able to infer from the species name, these centipedes are native to the Galapagos archipelago. However, the species does range elsewhere, having been recorded on nearby Cocos Island, as well as the South American mainland, more specifically the coastal regions of Peru and Ecuador. All captive Scolopendra galapagoensis originate from the mainland, mostly Peru, as the collection and exportation of native wildlife from the Galapagos is illegal. This species regularly attains lengths of around 25 centimetres, and individuals exceeding 30 centimetres, while not exactly the norm, aren't unheard of. Mainland and island forms of Scolopendra galapagoensis, while still classified as the same species, are visibly quite different from one another. Mainland individuals are very thick and beefy, and although not as overall mobile as the smaller, more gracile centipedes like Scolopendra subspinipes, they more than compensate for this shortcoming with their great muscular strength and ability to move in short bursts with incredible speed and power. On the contrary, island Scolopendra galapagoensis are more slender, with proportionally longer legs, possibly indicative of a more active lifestyle than their counterparts on the mainland, perhaps a result of the lack of large native predators on the Galapagos, allowing these centipedes to occupy a higher trophic level and therefore live less secretive lives, although this is merely personal speculation on my part. In addition to this variation in body proportions, the species, as is somewhat typical for giant centipedes, displays a rather wide range of colours and patterns as well. On continental South America, two main forms are known, a dark brown variant with banded legs which is probably the most familiar, and an orange form with horizontal bands of varying intensity. The latter is often erroneously labelled as Scolopendra gigantea robusta or Scolopendra viridicornis. 
Of course, neither of these names are accurate. Scolopendra gigantea currently has no recognised subspecies, with a former subspecies, Scolopendra gigantea weirauchai, not sure if I butchered that one or not, now recognised as synonymous with Scolopendra galapagoensis. Scolopendra viridicornis, meanwhile, is a smaller, albeit still very large centipede, that, while also native to South America, has little to no overlap in range with Scolopendra galapagoensis. It also possesses noticeably stubbier terminal legs and a prominent keel running down the rearmost tergite. Populations from the Galapagos archipelago also exhibit locality-dependent colour variation. Some have patterning reminiscent of the Dark Mainland variant, though often with more pronounced leg banding, while others, my personal favourites, because that's totally relevant, possess red legs. There are even some that are uniformly bright orange. Not the best camouflage, I must say, but I guess when you're a giant venomous arthropod on an island with barely any predators, you can afford to be a bit showy. Now, in second place on this list of big, chunky, leggy boys, is an undescribed Scolopendra species nicknamed White Legs, because of its, uh, white legs. I mean, I don't think I'd have to explain something that simple, but seeing as it's the internet, you never know. Like Scolopendra galapagoensis, white legs occurs in Peru, and while still relatively rare and expensive, has been kept and occasionally bred in captivity for years. It is sometimes sold as the Amazon giant white-legged centipede, or something along those lines, which is rather misleading. Seriously, if I want you to take anything away from this video, it's that centipedes are awesome and common names are bullshit. These centipedes allegedly inhabit a relatively high elevation dry habitat, very different from the lush Amazon rainforest. In fact, captive individuals will often succumb to mycosis if kept too moist, a common consequence of the misconception that these are rainforest animals. White legs is often thought to be a variation of Scolopendra gigantea, although centipede enthusiasts now seem to regard it as a separate, yet to be described species. And yes, since there are no scientific publications concerning the centipede, at least that I'm aware of, I had to rely on the knowledge of hobbyists. So shout out to all my fellow centipede keeping weirdos. Temperament-wise, these massive centipedes seem to be rather mellow, at least by centipede standards, especially in the case of larger individuals. Although it's worth noting that their bites, while often mild, can occasionally cause much more severe effects. This is plausibly something that can be attributed to the common tendency for many centipedes to inject small doses of venom and less heavily aggravated. Every centipede I've covered previously on this list is huge, make no mistake, but it's at this point that we go from huge to wondering if South America is somehow stuck in the Carboniferous period. White legs commonly surpass 25 centimetres, hit 30 centimetres on occasion, and some exceptional specimens exceed 35 centimetres, with one stupendously large individual reaching a whopping 39 centimetres. This specimen is in fact possibly the largest individual centipede on record. So why have I put white legs in second place? Have I finally succumbed to the sickness of the 10 biggest spiders videos that always put Theraphosa in second place in spite of it being the undisputed largest spider? Well, let's see what species takes the top spot for me. In the BBC documentary, Life in the Undergrowth, presented by none other than the legend Sir David Attenborough, one scene stuck out to my childhood self more than any other. A colossal centipede, 35 centimetres in length, scaled the wall of a dark Venezuelan cave, steadily making its way toward the ceiling. Reaching its destination, it waved its head eerily out into the emptiness below and in a split second its clawed legs had a bat firmly held in a nigh unbreakable grip. That scene captivated me as an eight-year-old, as, to be truthful, it still does, 
and it was a major step in the eventual overcoming of my childhood aversion to centipedes. Ironic indeed that the centipede species that set the stage for me to lose my fear of them was the most formidable of the lot. In first place on this list, to absolutely no one's surprise, especially given the fact that I've mentioned it a few times already, is Scolopendra gigantea. This species is commonly referred to as the Amazonian giant centipede, although the majority of its distribution lies outside the Amazon, being restricted to northern South America, including some offshore islands such as Trinidad and Aruba. It's worth noting that while some sources state that Scolopendra gigantea also occurs in localities such as the Caribbean, there have been no reliable records of this. It is possibly a case of misidentification with other large centipedes like Scolopendra alternans. Scolopendra gigantea is, to me, the Tyrannosaurus rex of the centipede world, in more ways than immediately apparent. Both were among the first members of their respective groups to be scientifically described, and given cruel, easily memorable, and very fitting names. And as the decades passed and endless new species continued to be discovered, nothing quite managed to unseat them from the top spots that they claimed all those years ago. Amidst the vast, varied and wondrous array of giant centipedes that have been catalogued since its discovery, Scolopendra gigantea remains the undisputed top dog of the lot. Giant centipedes are, in general, some of the most fearsome and effective hunters in the undergrowth. The South American Scolopendra species, with their immense bulk and sheer muscular strength, are overpowered even by centipede standards. And Scolopendra gigantea, even among such brutes, is in a league of its own. The physical strength of these giants has been described by centipede hobbyists as noticeably greater than that of other large South American species, and even a jab with their back legs can be powerful enough to draw blood. With this impressive musculature, it's small wonder that Scolopendra gigantea can bring down some very substantial prey items. The bat hunting behaviour that so enthralled my eight-year-old self is perhaps the most well-known example. Admittedly, it's not unique to this species. There have been a couple records of the smaller Scolopendra viridicornis preying on bats as well. Although they seem to be one-off instances of opportunistic predation, as opposed to the more purposeful hunting apparent in cave-dwelling populations of Scolopendra gigantea, which appear to capture bats with some degree of regularity and may be actively targeting them. Anyway, to get back to what I said earlier in the video, why have I put Scolopendra gigantea in first place on this list, when an individual of the undescribed white-legged species is currently the most likely record holder for centipede size? Well, first of all, a specimen of such dimensions is quite the anomaly, and if anything, Scolopendra gigantea is, on average, larger than white leg. Not only that, but it is proportionally more robust, and if one were to compare two individuals of comparable length, the gigantia would almost certainly be heavier, likely by a significant margin. In addition to this, exceptionally large individuals of white leg tend to be quite visibly overweight, and it's highly possible that such sizes are well beyond what the species would naturally reach. So there we have it, five of the largest centipedes on the planet. Hopefully you found this video of these awe-inspiring predators interesting. If you did, feel free to subscribe and take a look at some of my other uploads. If you didn't, who gives a fuck? Thank you very much for watching, that is it from me, and I shall see you again very soon.